Hello Mile 2. We're going to finish up today with our fishes. So we're going to continue to look at how they, again, are adapted to life in water. We've talked about um, excretion. We've talked about response. We've talked about how they feed. So today, and we've talked about circulation as well. So today we're going to look at the first thing is how they move. So most fishes will move by contracting pairs of paired sets of muscles on either side of their backbone and they have a series of S-shaped curves that move down across their body and this the force in the action of these fins after they contract the muscles will propel the fish forward and the fins of fishes are also used to keep on course and to adjust direction. So we've kind of mentioned before that the advantage of having pair fin paired fins gives them more control of their body. So again, the whole thing where they have one paddle in a canoe, you're just going to go around in circles. Or if you have one on each side, you're going to be able to go short, straight and move a lot faster. And that's what fish do to move. And having these series of curved muscles along the side of their body, contracting those will move their fins. And that's what's going to help them move and be very successful swimmers. So that's movement. Again, mostly just using their paired fins, using them in conjunction and together to make them move. And for reproduction, so this is going to be a big section of reproduction because there's going to be three main types that you're going to need to know the difference with, difference between. So the eggs of fishes are either fertilized either externally or internally depending on the species. So it can be either or. And fish whose embryos in the eggs develop and hatch outside the mother's body are called oviparous animals. So this, if you have external fertilization in a fish, you are known as an oviparous fish in terms of your um, reproduction. And the embryos of the oviparous fishes, they obtain food from the yolk and the egg. So what happens is the female lays her eggs across the bottom, the male comes along and fertilizes them outside of the mother's body. They develop the embryos, they feed on the yolk inside the egg, and they are known as oviparous animals. So that's our first type. Our second type is ovoviviparous. So again, sounds similar, but a little bit different. So ovoviviparous species, the eggs stay in the mother's body after internal fertilization. So the, this again, fertilized inside, and then each embryo develops inside its egg using the yolk for nourishment. And then the young are then born alive like most mammals. So it's not technically like mammals because they actually are inside of an egg, inside of a mother, but inside of the mother's body. So that's what ovoviviparous looks like, is that the, <clears throat> the eggs are fertilized inside of the mother, and then the eggs just stay inside, they hatch, and then, they're, and then they will leave their mother's body. So that's our second type. Our third type is viviparous. So this is, our, again, our last type. And viviparous animals... The embryos will stay in the mother's body after internal fertilization, so it's similar to ovoviviparous. However, these embryos obtain the substances they need from the mother's body, so they don't, they're don't they never actually inside of an egg, so they actually kind of have like an umbilical cord type thing to where they're hooked up and they're obtaining the source of food from their mother. And so in this species, the young of the viviparous species are born alive. So you're definitely going to need to know the difference between oviparous ovoviviparous and viviparous animals in terms of how they reproduce. So now that's how all the fish have adapted to life in water. So now we're actually going to talk about our three main groups of fishes. So all of our living fish today are classified into three groups. We have jawless, jawless fish, cartilaginous fish, and the bony fish. So those are our three different groups. So you're going to need to know all of those groups. So we're going to start with the jawless fish, because if you remember when we talked about evolution, these were the first type to evolve. So a jawless fish, they have no true teeth or jaws. Their skeletons are made up of fibers of cartilage, and they lack vertebrae. However, they keep their notochords as adults. So they don't really have a true backbone, but they do have what's their notochord is still present, and that's why we can consider them to be vertebrate animals. So that's the main characteristics of our jawless fish. And so today we have two characteristics, or two, two characteristics, two classes of jawless fish. We have what are known as lampreys and hagfish. And there you can see is a picture of a lamprey, and it is a face only a mother can love. So that is, again, they don't have a jaw. They have like a suction cup-like mouth, and that is what the suction cup-like mouth looks like. And yes, those are actually rows of tooth-like structures that are found inside of that mouth. And so to start, we're going to get a little bit more specific on each one. So lampreys are typically filter feeders as larvae, and they're parasites as adults. And so we're going to take a look at uh, this more in depth in class. And adult lampreys will attach themselves to fish, whales, and dolphins, and then they will scrape away at the skin with small tooth-like structures. 
and then after they scrape away at the skin, they attach themselves, then they can suck up the tissues and body fluids of the host. So usually, these aren't too big of a problem. They live naturally, they have predators. However, there's one type of lamprey called the sea lamprey that has kind of invaded the Great Lakes up in Michigan and areas like that, and they're a major problem because they're just feasting on the native fish species with no predators, really. So we're going to take a look at that problem more in depth in class. And then hagfish, they have pinkish gray worm-like bodies, and they have four or six short tentacles around their mouths, kind of similar to what like a catfish has, their whiskers, things like that. They lack eyes, but they do have light-detecting sensors that are scattered along their bodies, and they feed on dead and dying fish by using a tongue, a tooth tongue to scrape a hole into a, the fish's side. So these are really some of the most disgusting fish you could ever imagine. They actually produce a nasty slime as well, and they are really just nothing you would ever want to be around. They actually are eaten in parts of the world though, which is kind of weird. But their main thing, they don't, they aren't actually parasites like the lamprey. They just will eat on dead things is what they mainly do. And so our second group are going to be sharks and their relatives. And this class is known as chondrichthys, which just means to have cartilage. And then they contain sharks, rays, skates, sawfishes, and chimeras. Those are all going to be the groups, individuals found in this group. And the skeletons of these fish are built entirely of cartilage, so they have no bones. And then many sharks, again, just kind of some characteristics of this group, have thousands of teeth that are arranged in several rows, so if a shark ever loses a tooth, they already have another one there that's ready and it just moves right on down. And then they have to put this in here because of probably what most people see on Shark Week, but most species of sharks do not actually attack people. It's just kind of a rare occurrence when that actually does happen. So nothing to really, they are huge predators, but they're nothing to be terrified of, just as because it's very few and far between when people get attacked. And then the other member, main members of this group, skates and rays, if you've heard of stingrays, manta rays, things like that, they feed on bottom-dwelling invertebrates. And however, our largest rays just eat floating plankton, so you're going to kind of see that as a theme. Some of the biggest animals in the ocean just eat the tiniest animals. And they glide through the sea with their large wing-like pectoral fins, and they cover themselves with sand and rest on the ocean floor. So that's how this group kind of gets along and what they look like. And so our last group, the bony fish, they make up the class Osteichthys. So whenever you see the word Oste in front of anything, like osteoporosis, it has to deal with bones. And their skeletons are made up of bones. And almost all of our living fishes are what are we called ray-finned fishes. So that's going to be an important thing. You're going to need to know what a ray-finned fish is. And this refers to the slender bony spines or the rays that are connected by a thin layer of skin to form the fins. So it's just how there's a little spine connected to the fin, so that's why we call them ray finned. And then there's another group of bony fish that are not classified as ray finned, and we call these lobed fin fish. And this includes what are known as lung fishes and what's called the coelacanth, and these are basically the most ancient bony fish. And then they have a fleshy fin of lobed fins. They have fleshy fins of lobed fin fishes, have support bones, and some of these bones are jointed. So that's it for our groups of fishes. So our last word we're going to need to know is something to involve the salmon and that some fishes spend most of their lives in the ocean but they migrate to the fresh water to breed and these fish are called anadromous fish anadromous fish so that's going to be an important word you need to know anadromous just mean they spend most of their lives in the ocean but they migrate to fresh water to breed and salmon is the big example of this group so that's it for the fish let me know if you have any questions